Oklahoma's oil and gas industry is also applauding the selection of Scott Pruitt to head up the EPA. The energy sector has often been at odds with the regulatory approach of the EPA during the Obama administration. Now, Pruitt is widely expected to be a friendly voice for the industry, which may finally be seeing an economic turnaround after more than a year of declining oil prices. Oklahoma's oil and gas industry was quick to react to word that Scott Pruitt would become the new head of the Environmental Protection Agency pending Senate confirmation. The Oklahoma Independent Petroleum Association issued a statement citing what it called unnecessary and burdensome regulations on the oil and gas industry during the Obama administration and said Pruitt has been a consistent challenger to overreaching EPA regulations and his appointment will change the course of how the EPA is utilized by the White House administration. OIPA President Mike Terry says it's yet another sign that the Trump administration will be more favorable to oil and gas interest. I think we're going to see a reduction in some of the federal regulations that have hampered our ability to, to drill oil, uh, certainly in public lands and maybe offshore and other places. Um, and, and, you know, regulation is just a direct cost. Steve Agee, Dean of the Minders School of Business at Oklahoma City University, agrees. I think he'll direct a more business-oriented and less environmental type approach. So I think uh, it's definitely to the benefit of the oil and gas industry that Trump was elected. The election of Donald Trump and the nomination of Scott Pruitt aren't the only reasons industry leaders are encouraged about the future. Producers are also expecting to see higher prices for oil after the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, known as OPEC, agreed to cut production in the coming year. Terry says that's good news for Oklahoma. We've seen uh, how bad things can get. Uh, we've seen all the uh, cutbacks uh, in state agencies. Uh, we've seen the loss of jobs, bankruptcies, everything else. So uh, it's a breath of fresh air. Oil prices have climbed into the $50 a barrel range since the OPEC announcement. Terry says even a $1 increase in the price of oil adds about $150 million to the Oklahoma economy. So in just in the last couple of weeks, we've seen what, $8? $8 increase? That's almost a billion dollars. That's, that's big for our state. Oklahoma State Treasurer Ken Miller says the turnaround in the energy industry is reflected in the amount of revenue flowing into state coffers. If you look at uh, uh, gross production numbers, they are up uh, a little bit, but nonetheless, it looks like they may have hit an inflection point. That's positive news for us. Uh, if you look at mining employment, it is up a little bit, not much, but again, it has hit perhaps an inflection point and, and is trending in a more positive direction. Gross production taxes in November generated nearly $34.1 million, up almost 13 percent from the same month a year ago. Still, overall revenue dropped by 4.3 percent in November, extending the state's revenue contraction to 21 months and leaving little doubt Oklahoma is suffering from a recession although Miller does see some positive signs. It's been a longer recession than we experienced during the Great Recession, but the revenue loss has not been as great and the um, employment loss has not been as great. If you look at our unemployment figure at about a little over 5%, that's by most economists' measures, that would be full employment. Miller is still concerned about how the loss of oil patch jobs is affecting sales and income taxes both of which fell significantly last month. But if you, if you look at um, leading indicators, it would suggest that those spillover effects will moderate too, uh, as does our anchor industry improve. Terry says the industry is starting to rehire workers. But it's not gonna happen overnight. You can't just flip a switch, you know, and people just show up and, and it, it just returned to what it was uh, before the downturn. It's gonna take a while. AG says even with OPEC's decision to curtail production, the supply of oil still exceeds demand, and the industry will have to work off the excess oil currently in storage. There's a lot of oil at Cushing, for example. There's oil in tankers floating around the world. And so we have such uh, huge oil stocks or supplies already in storage. We're going to have to whittle that down before we see any kind of appreciable increase in oil prices. 
According to a recent study by the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City, oil prices will have to get back to an average of around $55 a barrel for drillers to make a profit. Until prices reach that point, AG doesn't expect to see too much of a boom in oil field activity. I don't think you're going to see a real burning desire for these companies to grow aggressively and expand aggressively given this current situation. They're just going to watch and see. They're going to watch and see how this develops. They're going to see how these countries hold together in this cartel arrangement for output supplies. And they're going to see what happens to the price of oil. Lawmakers are also keeping a close eye on oil prices. The legislature faced a $1.3 billion budget hole last session, due in part to the energy downturn, although Miller doesn't think it will be quite as deep next year. Uh, there's still going to be a significant hole uh, because of the amount of one-time uh, revenues that were employed in the budget, and so you're going to have to dig your way out of that hole. But as far as revenues coming in, I do think that we'll see uh, better revenues for the next fiscal year for the legislature to work with. Lawmakers will get their first indication of how much they'll have to work with when the State Equalization Board meets December 21st.